Hey everybody, my name is Shrimp Tom, and today we're going to talk about clerics. Because something you may or may not be aware of is that there's going to be some potential cleric changes coming up really, really soon. And I'm really excited for them. Uh, now, there's been some back and forth on the DDO forums about the cleric changes. Um, there's a whole thread on the forums about it, which I'm currently looking at. Uh, basically, what we're going to do here is I'm going to try to break down what the changes actually are, what they mean for the class, and kind of how they move clerics forward. So, one of the first things that's in this post here is want to make sure that pure clerics and favorite souls aren't better, or like, what was it? They're, like, they're basically buffed clerics favorite souls soon and some of those changes are going to impact both the base classes clerics and favorite souls and also add new features the, the adding new features is very very cool but some of the changes that are being made towards the uh, clerics and specifically to their base class are really 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 positive and so we're going to talk about that uh, right here and the big change that a lot of people got a lot of people talking that all is fire all over the internet is this one right here so turn undead now does the following so this is a new turn undead old turn undead did something this new turn undead does something else so dc is 10 plus cruise modifier plus cleric level plus paladin level plus turning bonus this means if you multi-class cleric and paladin you actually just maintain the same level of uh turning so that's kind of cool that's like almost never happens so like why would you add two classes? But whatever, they're just doing that. So that's kind of neato. If the saving throw has failed, you do a bunch of damage per cleric level, plus paladin level, and the undead are stunned for 10 seconds. Uh, so that's kind of cool. It just does a bunch of damage. And if saving throw is made, half damage and no stun. So there's no longer hit die limitations, and various and feats enhancements will boost turn undead. We've modified to work without the DC of the damage aspect version of this turn undead. Cool. So a lot of people got really, really immediately upset by this because this means that turn undead no longer instantly kills undead or fears them. Now it does damage and a stun or half damage. Um, so I can understand some of the immediate outrage and the outcry. Um, you know, a lot of people like the fact that you could turn undead and instantaneously kill them. Um, but we're going to talk about why this change is good and positive, even if it doesn't specifically do that, and also why that's still actually in the game. So to start out, I made a spreadsheet because you got to talk math. Uh, when you're talking about any any kind of change that they add to the game, you always need some kind of math. If I just tell you, oh man, this is better, or this is worse, how can I say if this is better or worse? So I made this nice mutable spreadsheet where I can change the numbers in here and change stuff. So while I was making the spreadsheet, I realized that I don't really know how Turn Undead works because it's really, really complex, okay? So Turn Undead has this weird formula where there's something called a turning value, and then you have a max hit dice and a total hit dice turned, okay? And these things are all very separate. So your turning value is basically like there's a number that's made up of your cleric level and other bonuses. Uh, your maximum hit dice turned is basically your cleric turning level plus a bunch of other stats. And then your total hit dice is somewhere in between like a base number. So you have like you roll dice like 2d6 and then you also have your charisma and your turning value. So it's very convoluted. And it's very confusing. So we're going to we're going to try to deep dive into this. Oh, they did find a typo right here. This is supposed to say Cleric Past Lives. So we're just going to fix that up right here. Oh, that's not what I want at all. Oh, silly, silly thing. This is supposed to say Cleric. All right, so how exactly does Turn Undead works? So start off, effective turning level, Charisma Mod, Max Hit Dice, and Total HD. Uh, if you have a maximum hit dice level of double the hit dice of an undead, when you turn it, it causes that undead to become turned. And... Uh, die instantaneously. However, if you just have enough, it will turn it and become feared. And then the total number you can fear is based on this number here. So as you can see, at low levels, if a monster has a maximum hit dice of 1, then you can turn it, and you can turn up to 12 of those monsters. So say you're fighting a hit dice 1 skeleton, your level 1 cleric, all your stats are set to 0, you don't have any turning items or past lives or whatever, charisma's plus, modest plus 4, your maximum turn, you're able to turn skeletons have a maximum hit dice of 1, and your average turning, the hit dice is 12. So you can turn 12 skeletons and make them feared. Super duper cool. Um, but there's other things that affect this. Uh, you're also going to notice that maximum hit dice does not scale very well with total hit dice. Um, they So if you look here, you could scale tw you could kill or turn 12 of these things here with one of these. Uh, or turn 12 things because you got 12 to 1. Uh, here, it's 45 to 34. So you can effectively, if you can turn 34 things or 34 hit dice, you only have a total of 45. You cannot turn that much. Uh, so... Obviously, there's a bit of a discrepancy there. So now we're going to talk about kind of some of the bonuses. I'm going to assume that if you're turning, you're always going to be using Seek Eternal Rest, which adds a bonus. All this math checks out here, so bear with me. So what this means 
is that, like I said, to instantly kill stuff with Turn Undead, you have to hit double the maximum hit dice, okay? So if a monster has a maximum hit dice of five, uh, or a hit dice of five, like a skeleton, and I can turn seven, it doesn't die instantaneously. But if I can turn 10, it does die instantaneously. The reason why this part is, gets really confusing is because nobody, or maybe there's some tables and charts out there that have like maximum hit dice of monsters, but that's a stat that we just don't have access to. I don't have access to it, you don't have access to it, no one has access to it. So actually trying to figure out the turning the maximum hit dice is very, very difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around some of the numbers here and kind of show you what happens when you up some of the numbers. So let's just assume you got three cleric past lives. Bam. Let's assume that you took improved turning from Radiant Servant. Sure. Uh, let's assume that you have the improved turning feat, which I don't recommend taking, but sure you can. Uh, let's say that your turn level from items is going to be a two. Sweet. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, your maximum hit dice bonus turn. Uh, items can give you a total of eight. And improved turning gives you uh, an extra three, so that's a total of 11. Uh, your total HD turned, again, it's going to be the same. It's actually going to be th uh, three higher because improved turning here actually does double for the actual total hit dice turn. So it's going to be 14 total. And let's say your charisma is so high, your turning check, which is this thing where you add like a D20 plus your charisma modifier and you have to hit a 22. Let's say you always hit that 22, so you're always going to be adding four. So now you have the maximum charisma value at all times, okay? So what this means is that here, uh, this is, and this is again, this is a fully specto character. You've got two items set for turning. You have a turning item and an insightful turning item. Uh, you've got the feet. You've got the points spent in the uh, radiant, so, uh, radiant Servant Tree. Uh, you've got you Seek Eternal Rest. You've got three Cleric Pass Lives. All that put together is going to give you your effective maximum turning. Uh, so you can turn a maximum of 58 hit dice for a total of 68 hit dice. Now, remember what I said about this not scaling linearly? It's because it doesn't. Um, the problem with this is it doesn't really scale quite properly uh, because of how the actual math and the calculations work out. So, if you can turn, if a monster has 29 hit dice, you can turn it instantaneously. But how many hit dice does a monster have? Nobody really knows. Saves are pretty easy to work out. So, for example, if you're doing something like Slave Lords, you can usually jump in and say, cool, these monsters have a 90 or like a, a 75 fortitude save. So if you have a 95 DC, you've got no fail on your stuff. Cool, awesome. Maximum hit dice. It super varies from quest to quest and the type of monster, and it's very hard to actually calculate and figure out. Um, and this is where the like generous numbers is also maxing out your charisma modifier. Bear in mind, if you're playing as a cleric, you don't really want to max out your charisma modifier. Uh, so you want to max out your wisdom modifier generally, because wisdom is going to give you better spells and other stuff. So that's why I said given having a 25 mod or a 60 charisma, which is still really good. Um, you know, that's these are the kind of numbers you're working with. Um, now, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is that instantly killing monsters is not usually done by having a double hit dice from turn. There's actually an enhancement in Radiant Servant that I really should have had prepped that I didn't. But I'm going to super quick load it up here. Bam! Enhancement Radiant Servant Cleric. There's an enhancement here. Radiant Servant, which is mighty turning undead that you successfully turn are dis instead destroyed. That's what most people are referring to. So this number right here, the max HD is not quite as important. The most important thing is the total hit dice average, okay? So, now that I just blew your mind and you're like, I don't even understand what these numbers are, don't worry about it. It gets even better. Paladin is basically... Oh, this is even bigger. Why is this bigger? Paladin is basically the same thing. I'm just going to drag this over. Uh, except the big difference with Paladin is it's just worse. Um, Paladin is three levels lower. So, if you're Paladin, you have to deal with three lower hit dice as your maximum and three lower total hit dice. So, you're going to have a higher charisma on average than Paladin. You're probably going to have a higher charisma, but eh, still not that great. The new turn is a little interesting. So we're going to look at that. So here's the new turn chart. So the thing about the new turn chart is it's not quite as complicated as the other two charts. Yes, it still has bonuses. In fact, a lot of those bonuses aren't even recorded. I don't know what improved turning and stuff does. I'm making an assumption about some of these things because they haven't really been clear about how it changes. Um, but the table's at least a little bit easier. Uh, instead, it's turn DC. Uh, I should have actually wrote this here, but the turn DC is 10 plus Paladin plus uh, Cleric plus a turn. So it's all these turning bonuses. The nice thing about this is I only have to make one chart. I don't need to make a paladin and a cleric chart. I can just make one. 
which is great. Um, but yeah, so these are the actual differences to the character. So this is a character with absolutely no investment in turning. I have zero past lives, zero cleric, uh, the feet. I can even turn this off. Let's just turn this off. So let's, let's say if I don't have a feet, nothing. So I have no investment in turn undead other than having some charisma. What happens? Well, with no investment in turn undead other than having charisma, uh, this stuff is the damage on this is going to scale with positive spell power. And I gave a very, very low ball estimate of how much positive spell power you're going to have. So with your turn undead, uh, the DC is going to start out pretty low. Uh, so, you know, there's your DC. And then with the same scaling charisma mod that we used before. So by level 4, your DC is already at 20. Bear in mind, this is a will save. Undead don't really have willpower. Uh, most, any undead that has no intelligence has no willpower save. They usually automatically fail. So against skeleton zombies, this is pretty much always going to work. And then against the most intelligent undead, your arcane skeletons, your whites, your race, they will have a slightly higher save, but usually it will save is one of the lowest for undead. Um, you're going to notice that with no investment, the DC is 65. That's not bad. That's a pretty good turning DC. So that's kind of cool. So what does it do? Um, well, it does some damage. I took the average damage here. So let's say you're level 4. Uh, dealing 36 with a 40 spell power. Get level 4 with a 40 spell power, you're probably going to be higher than this. I mean, you can get an item that gives you a 42 plus, you know, your heal skill, plus other stuff, ship buffs. You'll be likely around 60, 70, that sort of thing. But I'm lowballing at a 40. You'll be doing an average of 36.4 damage. Um, now, this is not including critical hits, which they did say this ability can critically hit with your positive spell power. Um, and I don't know if this actually scales if you can use in a, a metamagic feat with it. But just looking at the numbers, DC 20 with no investment, 36.4 uh, average damage. That's not bad. I mean, level 4, you can just go boom, have a little bit of burst, you're going to add a little bit of AoE damage. Consider as well that with a charisma mod of 6, that's going to give you 10 turns per day. So with 10 turns with this, that's 360 extra damage in AoE that you didn't do before. Yes, maybe you could one-shot the undead, but you're not one-shotting the undead. You're doing this. So that's kind of neato. And uh, now finally... Then it goes all the way up to DC 65 at max level with very little investment. And DC 65 is enough so that um, some of the monsters might even fail their saves. You just bam, you throw it. Some All the undead that are unintelligent are going to automatically fail their saves. Because remember, along with this damage comes a 10 second stun. Okay? So now let's put some real numbers to paper. How is this new thing going to work? Bam. So let's make some changes. So. Uh, I made a couple changes to this table here. I don't know how Seek Eternal Rest is actually going to factor into everything, because um, I have no idea. Um, the Cleric Past Lives, I'm going to say, yeah, you've got some Past Lives, and it's definitely going to affect your DCs. Turning from items is probably going to affect DCs. The feet, maybe, improved turning, it's probably going to affect your DCs. I, don't, I have no way to confirm or deny this. I have no idea. But with a little bit of investment, uh, and also more realistic spell power numbers, so kind of scaling a little bit more uh, a little bit more harder, you might notice that I have uh, about 200 or 300 at level 20 and 900 at level 30. That's because items play a huge role. Once you're at level 28, the amount of items that you get is crazy, okay? Uh, this, your stat difference, and especially going all up to level to max level. If you think that's a crazy number, there are players out there who do hit over 1,000 healing spell power, so this is not a crazy number if you're going to be playing a healing cleric. Um, without adjusting the charisma modifier at all, which I probably could, the DC is still going to be up to 76. This is assuming that, you know, the bonuses aren't going to be better at all for the DCs. There isn't going to be like a plus 5 DC in the tree and all this other stuff with no assumption of what's going to be in the tree. 76 DC level 30 for a will save. Not bad in an AoE and the damage is going to be doing about 1950 here on average with that kind of spell power. That might not seem like a lot but again we don't know um, if it's going to scale with metamagic feats which it just might. Um, but overall the most important thing is if the monsters fail their saves it's still going to apply a 10 second stun. So the amount of AoE damage you're going to be doing plus the 10 second stun this is a crazy new ability. Yes, it may not one-shot monsters, but realistically, are you gonna one-shot monsters? I mean, even maxing out the numbers and putting everything to the highest I possibly could, uh, unless you take the ability at a Radiant Servant, this mighty turning here, uh, you're likely not gonna be one-shotting any monsters. Unless you put heavy investment into it, which is several past lives and a lot of items. Uh, this thing, with like no items, maybe even one item, uh, you're looking at a pretty much guaranteed 10 seconds stun on a whole AoE group of monsters. And 10 seconds of stun, by the way, is effectively a, a, a one-shot. Um, so the new turn undead, to me, seems much more favorable because you're going to be able to apply significant damage just in combat. Boom, 50 AoE damage at level 4 that you can do multiple times, considering the turns also regenerate. So that's kind of cool. So... <laughs> I mean, it's just this regenerating source of damage, AoE, doesn't factor into any other spell powers. It's going to cause a stun. The stun is going to make stuff helpless. So it just seems really, really good to me.
Um, so, like I said, I did some of the math, um, and that I'm kind of showing it off here. Overall, I think it's going to be a better a better feature, but that's not the only thing. The new turn on dead is going to do a lot of cool stuff that it didn't do before. So what is that? Well, clerics are also going to be getting something called domains, and domains are really great. Looking at the actual domains here, we're gonna go through them one by one. Most of them are, there. a lot of them are really similar. We're gonna talk about what they do and why it matters that Turn Undead has been changed. Uh, because a lot of these, a lot of the domains that they're adding change Turn Undead. So we'll get started here. The, by the way, this is gonna be a really long video. If you wanted something else, um, if you wanted something that wasn't quite as long, I apologize, but too bad. Uh, so. The uh, different domains apply a, different, a lot of different effects. So starting at level two, you pick clerical pick a domain that provides uh, free additional class feats. Um, and this is gonna change a lot. So number one, almost every single domain changes turn undead in some way. So for example, air domains. When you use turn undead, your party gains bonus reflex saving. Those equal to half your cleric level and points of electric resistance equal to twice your cleric level. Cool, so reflex saving throws are good. Resistance is good. Oh, turn undead now works on el elementals. Cool, so now if I pick air domain, um, it, oh, my music is loud. Thank you for helping me with that. Um, but now, if I pick Turn Undead, uh, I can turn Elementals. A 10 second stun on Undead and all Elementals? That's hilarious! Uh, turn Undead works on animals. A 10 second stun on animals and Undead? Whoa! And this is super useful. I'm talking about, uh, you know, a blast part of Slave Lords. You bam, you just, all the wargs come in, you just turn them undead. Or now they just stop because they got no will saves. I'm talking about all over the place. This is going to be super useful. So, the new turn with a 10 second stun is, as opposed to the fear effect, which Everybody hated the fear effect, by the way. Um, if your turning is just not good enough, ugh, fear effect. Uh, so that's important. The other part is there's a lot of different domains. Air domain, animal domain, chaos domain, death domain. This one's really, really important. Uh, your turn undead does twice the normal amount of damage. That's awesome. And also, undead that fail their saving throw undes are destroyed. Oh, So now, instead of having to work by some, like, shoddy... Uh, system where it's like, oh yeah, uh, hit dice or something, and trust me, doing the math, it took me an hour to actually put the spreadsheet together because the math was too hard to figure out on how it actually calculates it. Um, yeah, now it's just a DC that's 10 plus cleric level, paladin level, charisma modifier, and other shit. So, look at that. Undead that fail the same throw is destroyed. So all you people that were like, man, this really sucks. I can't one-shot undead anymore. Yes, you can. It's right there. So, that's kind of neat, though. Uh, so now I'm going to go through each domain. This is going to be a really long video. That's fine. I'm going to go through each in individual domain. We're going to talk about what it is and what it means for the character uh, and how you can do stuff. So, number one, air domain. So, uh, bonus DCs of evocation spells. It gives you four extra evocation DCs. Really good. This is the, one of the coolest features, the uh, spell power transversion. So you get lightning spells, use light spell power, and your light spells use lightning spell power. This means you can just focus on light spell power, boost it up, and you're going to get equal amounts of lightning spell power. Very cool. Plus you get Featherfall, Cyclonic Blast, and Chain Lightning. Now, Chain Lightning is pretty much the only good ability here. Um, Cyclonic Blast is terrible, Featherfall is terrible, um, but Chain Lightning is pretty cool, and it does a lot of damage, so you can't complain about that. Um, problem is, Clerics only have Chain Lightning as their one lightning spell, so I don't know if this domain is that good, so I probably wouldn't take it. Animal Domain. You gain Spotless and Reflex Saving Throws every two character levels. That's ten Reflex Saving Throws. This is a very good domain. Uh, your turn undead works in animals. When you turn undead, your party gains constitution equal to half your cleric level. If you're 20 levels of cleric, that means you turn undead, and that's 10 constitution for the entire party. Uh, if everyone's level 30, that's, th uh, what is that? Uh, 150, or 50, yeah, 150 extra health for every member of the party. Very, very good. But it's only for 20 seconds, but it's still pretty good. Uh, level 5, you gain 20 hit points per cleric level and 20 gets your cleric level hit points for each epic level you ga have gained, as well as 15% fortification and snow slide as a spell like ability. So, snow slide is great. It's probably going to scale off some kind of weird cleric stuff, so really good. And a ton of health. So, you become insanely tanky. This is uh, 600 hit points right here, if you're wondering what the math works out to. So, by taking animal domain, if you're a pure cleric, you gain uh, 600 hit points. Oh, sorry. Is it 600? 20 per cleric. There's 20 levels of clerics, that's 400, and twice your cleric level, so we're 800 hit points. 800 health, plus uh, half your cleric level in constitution. Pretty cool. So this one's really good for making you really tanky. So you could use this as some kind of tank build, melee build, you could do like a cleric, uh, cleric warlock type tank build if you wanted to, to get that extra health. Ooh, some fighter, you know, something like that. And then you have chaos domain, so you get will saving throws every two cleric levels on its own. 
When you turn undead, your party gains d20 universal spell power and 1d10 points, each rolled separately. Melee range, physical resistance rating, magical resistance rating. You get Chaos Hammer, Spell Critical Chance, and Prismatic Spray. This one is not very good. Chaos Domain is not very good, but it looks like it's a lot of fun. It's the kind of thing you just you want to play when you, you pick make your character. You get to level 2 and you're like, man, you're playing in a full party of guys, and then someone's like, I want to play Chaos Domain, and they're constantly turning undead and then giving people random stats and stuff. That seems like it could be a lot of fun. Plus, Chaos Hammer is a cool spell-like ability. You get a level 5, by the way, so it's just good. It looks awesome. Great effect. And Prismatic Spray is fun. So I think this is going to be a really fun domain. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's competitively good. I think it's just fun. Death Domain. We talked about this, but of course, uh, Turn Undead does twice the normal amount of damage, so that's really good. And Undead that fail their saving throw are destroyed. So this is amazing. Plus, it also gives you plus four to the DCs of your necromancy spells by max level. Uh, this means destruction and slay living become incredibly powerful. You get destruction spell-like abilities. You get two destructions. You know, people are like, oh, man, like, peak gnomes with their PKs are super good because you can PK everything. Yeah, by the way, this is like gnomes with their PKs, except it's destruction. So it affects constructs and undead. So it's just straight up better. So, like, you can one-shot all undead. Undead that resist, you can destruction them. And constructs can be destructioned. So... Like, it's really good. And you get Necrotic Ray, the best ne negative energy spell, which is amazing. And if you're already playing as a uh, uh, undead cleric, you get Necrotic Ray as well. So, or not the undead, the um, negative energy divine disciple, you get Necrotic Ray. This actually really makes it possible to play a negative energy cleric. Getting two massive Necrotic Rays is hilarious. Plus Death Ward, level five. Whatever, sure. It's free. Cool. Uh, destruction. Uh, plus one melee and range power, and you get, so you get a total of, I think it's six melee and range power, so that's kind of whatever. You can cast your cleric spells while raging, and your spells are no longer penalized by rage spells. Hilarious! Let's make a rage cleric. When you turn undead, your party gains divine bonus to melee power equal to half your cleric level. That's whatever. Durability to damage is 74%. Love it. Your weapons do extra plus the damage. Love it. Your weapon strikes add a stack of destru improved destruction. Hilarious. So this is cool. I don't know if this is good or not, but you can cast spells while raging. This means rage barian? Claire barian? Cleric barian? That seems pretty cool. I would definitely play one of these. I tell you, I'm telling you that right now. This seems like it could be just be really fun. The cool thing, by the way, about this, as I go through each domain, every single one, I'm going to try to recommend a class for you to play with. Um, that means Cleric, if they get these domains, is going to have that many extra different class options that they can play as. I'm going to be... Pl you could play, like, your entire... You could play probably, like, 10 or 12 different types of Clerics, and you're still getting a different experience every time. So this is hilarious. Uh, Earth Domain, which I think is the absolute worst domain of them all. Uh, so pro I don't recommend taking Earth Domain, but I'll explain why. So Earth Domain, you gain plus two acid spell power per cleric level. So it's a total of 40 at level 20. Your acid spells use light spell power or, and light and acid is a conversion thing. You can turn undead. Turn undead. Your, sorry, when you turn undead, your party gains bonus fortitude. Same throws equal to half your cleric level. And points of acid resistance is equal to your twice your cleric level. Eh. You get Melsastro, Stone Skin, and Earthquake. So Stone Skin SLA is great. Earthquake SLA is... Yeah. I mean, it's Earthquake, so it's really, really, really good, obviously. And Mel Sassadero sucks. So, with Mel Sassadero being terrible, Stone Skin being okay, and Earthquake being amazing, uh, this acid spell power is kind of garbage, because, well, clerics don't have acid spells. So the only acid spell you get is Mel Sassadero. So I don't know what what's going on here. I don't know who thought of this. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. But this needs to be fixed. There's no acid spells. So if clerics get more acid spells, maybe it's going to be good. But I have no build recommendations for this. Um, if you want Earthquake as an SLA, sure, that's kind of good. But there were people on the forums that were like, oh, this is going to kill Druid. Druids, they're going to make them. No one's going to play a Druid anymore. Are you kidding? Druids' cooldown is shorter, and they do way more damage. If you pick Earth Domain, you're basically throwing away all the new cleric stuff. So, yeah, sure, this is going to kill Druids. Uh, druids are still going to be better than this. And because, again, there's no... There's, there's no spells on here that are actually good. Earthquake does no damage, um, and they don't get any acid spells. So no, this is not going to kill Druid. Okay, Druid is more dead, and it, also, to be fair, this cannot kill Druid because Druid is more dead than DDO itself. Like, there's there's nothing more dead than Druid. Nobody plays Druid. It's a terrible class, okay? Oh my god. So yeah. It's the worst one. Um... Fire Domain. So fire is great, because you get fire equal to your light and fire spell power. Uh, Divine Disciple is light and fire, so you can just focus all on light and get the fire spell power for free. That's super cool. Plus fire spell power. Oh. Uh, when you turn undead, your party gains fire resistance. That's just good. And you get Scorching Ray, Wall of Fire, and Firestorm. This is spell-like abilities, man. This is spell-like abilities, man. Look at this. Look at this. Scorching Ray, Wall of Fire, Firestorm. Scorching Ray is amazing. Okay, this does so much damage. Wall of Fire is amazing, and Firestorm is amazing. These spells are super good. Um... 
This is just a really good, uh, it's the only wall of fire spell like ability in the game. It's going to cleric. This is one of the coolest domains out there. So I highly recommend fire domain. You can play as a wicked fire cleric, uh, just a pure DPS evocation caster. It's going to be great. Uh, good domain. You gain light spell power per cleric level, and you can plus one to heal scale. Ooh. When you turn undead, you get party gains temporary hit points equal to five times your cleric level. This is crazy. Uh, if you're going max charisma, you can look at yourself expecting about 40 turns per day. Uh, with 40 turns plus this, five times your cleric level, that's 100 temporary hit points to the whole party every time you turn, on top of the fact that it's also going to be hitting undeads, that sort of thing. Um, and you gain Defiant Vengeance as, as a spell-like ability. No one uses, or sorry, Deific Vengeance, but now you get it. Blade Barrier. Blade Barrier, and evil damage reduced by 20% and you gain saving throws. So you get Blade Barrier at level 9, two levels early, and it's the spell-like ability. Yeah, good domain is going to be pretty good, guys. Uh, good domain combined with all of this stuff from Positive Energy Divine Disciple. This is going to be a very, very good domain to use, being as a full-end caster. It's so good. I, I mean, you could even argue playing, like, maybe, like, 15 Cleric and then, like, 5 Favorite Soul, so you can actually get the top tier in Favorite Soul and take everything good out of the uh, Angel of Vengeance tree, and then but still have the Blade Barrier spell-like ability. Like, it's that good, okay? So I can see, like, a, a Cleric Favorite Soul split with this. So there you go. Uh, healing Domain. So you gain plus 2 positive spell power per devotion per Cleric level. When you use Turn on Dead, your party gains points of Healing Amp equal to your Cleric level. You get a Cure Moderate Wound spell-like ability. Woohoo! Cleric, I love that. Panacea spell-like ability, that's kind of neato. And healing spells are quickened, as if you had quickened meta magic, does not increase their cost. I don't know if this stacks with quicken, it might, but this is honestly something that will push, push Cleric over the top as being the best healer by far. Having all your healing spells quickened at all times is super powerful, um, because you're already going to be quickened them, but you have to spend all that extra mana every time you cast. Almost every Cleric is going to have to take the improved meta magic quicken. This just cuts that right out of the equation, gives you two great spell-like abilities. Panacea is good for just cleansing everything all the time in combat. Oh, guy gets stunned. Boom, cleanse it off. Oh, guy's got a disease. Cleanse it off. Cleanse it off. Cleanse it off. Cleanse it off. Um, you don't have to think about the mana cost of that. You just do it. Um, more bonus positive energy spell power. And the extra positive energy spell power here, again, remember, that factors back into all the stuff in Radiant Servant and your turn on dead damage. So, this is really good. It means that you can pretty much still be able to turn on dead super effectively. Um, man, this is just good. This is just good. So, healing domain is just good. This is crazy. Um... Knowledge Domain. Plus two to all skills. I don't know. That seems whatever. When you turn on dead, your party gains intelligence equals half your cleric level. This is madness. I don't I don't know what this is for. Um, suggestion is an SLA. I'm sure somebody will use it. It's probably good in Reaper mode. Feeble Mind is an SLA. I don't know what Feeble Mind is for, but that's kind of neato. Level 14. You gain half your cleric level as spell penetration, and you gain plus one of the DCs of all spells, and up to plus three at cleric level 20. This is crazy. Plus three DCs of all spells. That's your evocation, your necromancy, or whatever. And ten spell penetration. I don't know if you understand, but 10 spell penetration is really, really, really good. Um, if you play as a pure cleric, you could play one of the most fiendish DC clerics I've ever seen. Uh, you know, your greater command, comet fall, that sort of thing. All of them have plus their DCs, and you have ridiculous spell penetration. You can just bypass everything. Really cool concept. Probably garbage. This turn on dead thing where you gain, uh, like, you can give people 10 intelligence if you're pure cleric. I mean, that's neato. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's good. But it's neato, so maybe it's good. Uh, I could definitely see like some kind of support crowd control cleric with this build. Now, Law Domain is actually very interesting. This is a CC cleric because it gives you DCs to your enchantment spell, so it's an extra four. When you turn dead, your party gains wisdom equal to half to your cleric level. That includes you. And you get Order's Wrath and Greater Command as a spell-like ability. Now, this is actually super cool. And one of the reasons why I like this so much is because I thought of him immediately when I saw this build. I was like, ooh, genius. Uh, cleric, Arcane Archer, so you play as an elf or a half-elf. Or a or a Sun Elf, I guess. You go Cleric, you go Arcane Archer. You got Law Domain. So your Arcane Archer, you got Paralyzing Arrows with the plus four DCs to enchantment. You get plus the Wisdom, which you can be constantly turning and pumping out to give yourself that extra ten Wisdom. Uh, so it's an extra five to those DCs. So you're going to be doing that. Your Greater Command is going to have nine to its DC, because Greater Command is actually an enchantment spell. That's awesome. And then you just get Order's Wrath for free. So you basically become this unstoppable crowd control machine. So I love the idea of Law Domain, Law Domain, Archie Nurture, Crowd Control Cleric. Plus you can be healing and doing other stuff. Kind of cool. Uh, next, we got Luck Domain. Uh, Luck Domain gives you a plus to all your saves. Sweet. Uh, when you choose turn on dead, your party gains Divine Bonus to saving throws. Sweet. I, I don't know. Displacement of spell like ability? Sure. And then level 9. You add 1d8 to the DCs of all your spells rolled separately. That is awesome. That means every single time you cast a spell, it will add a d8 to the dc of that spell. Is that good or not? Well, it could be plus 8 to the dc of that blade barrier you just laid down. So anything with evasion? Get real. 
or I don't know. So, like I said, is this good? I don't think so. I don't think it's good. It's just plus four to the DCs, but it could be good. It could, it, well, all I know for sure is it's definitely fun. It's definitely fun. And if you were killed, your max is survive getting fifty percent of your max life. This cannot occur more than once per five minutes. This is just this just looks fun. Um, I don't know if this would add to the DC of turn undead. So that would need a clarification. But this just looks straight up fun. I love this idea. I love playing some kind of goofy spell cleric thing. I don't even know what you would play with this. Honestly, I can't think of a build for this one. This is just madness. <coughs> Magic domain. Plus to the evocation DCs of spells. Um so this is what four point? What is this? Uh, four DC of evocation bonus. Turn undead, you get a divine bonus, universal spell power equal to cloister cleric level. Uh, this is cool because pumping a forty universal spell power is just good. You get chain missile spell like ability. Ooh, you gain number of spell points equal to your cleric level times ten. So if you happen to have twenty levels of cleric, that's two hundred extra mana, and universal spell power equal to twice your cleric level. So this is if you're pure cleric, this is eighty universal spell power, two hundred mana, and a chain missile spell like ability. I don't know if that's really, really good at all. It's really hard to say. Is 80 spell points worth taking all those cleric levels? Plus you get the DCs. So it's it's just honestly good. And if if there's going to be a Passover of Divine Disciple as well when this comes out and or Radiant Servant, this could be good. Either way, if you take Cleric with uh, six levels of Wizard, so you take five levels of Cleric, six levels of Wizard, uh, and then the rest favored soul, you could make the most insane Sharati caster I've ever seen. So I would love to see a Sharati caster really adopt the magic domain here to get two chain missile spell like abilities and then the spell chain missiles and just <laughs> nuke everything on screen. I think that would be super fun. Uh, protection domain. Actually, I was wrong. Remember when I said that uh, the earth domain is the worst? Protection domain is the worst. And then it's the earth domain. Protection domain gives you. Um, what is this? Four, five AC, PR, PRR, and MRR, so nothing. And when you use turn undead, your party gains PR and MRR equal to twice your cleric level. This one's kind of cool because it's twice your cleric level, so you could definitely throw this into like some kind of tank or something. But even at 20, that's only 40 each. Um, you get night shield. Well, you already have the spell. You get radiant force field. That's kind of cool. And your armor class and physical resistance rating are increased by your cleric level. If this was magical resistance rating too, I would honestly consider this potentially very, very good as a, some kind of tank build. If you did like 14 levels of cleric and some other stuff. But because it's, ah, it's just not that good. It's defensive. You can use this as some kind of tank build. But honestly, yeah, I wouldn't never consider it unless you're playing some kind of tank build. And then even then, you might as well just go warlock and get better bonuses to all of these. So this is not very good. You do get healing though, because you can still do all your cleric stuff. So you can do like blade bears and stuff. I don't know. I don't think it's that good. Uh, strength domain. So you gain plus two strength and become immune to strength damage. That's what? Like <laughs> plus two strength damage, become immune to strength. That's kind of cool. Neato. Uh, immune to strength damage. Have you ever uh, done shadow crypt? So if you've done any of the shadow tombs, you know that sh shadows hit you for strength damage, and it makes you want to tear your own face out. Um, this means you're immune to strength damage. This is just hilarious. I really love this idea. Uh, no more. Uh, Ray of Exhaustion, or uh, Ray of Bewilderment, or any of that garbage. It just gets rid of that. When you turn a dead, you get a divine bonus to strength. Cool! Your reflex saves are based off your strength, this is your dexterity. This is one of the coolest things here. I don't know if this is good or not, but it just sounds really cool. You're immune to knockdown effects, and you always make your saving throw against stun effects. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, I kinda wanna make a murder strength cleric, who just has an insane amount of strength, and just kills people, because you're completely immune to stuns. You know how when you roll that sound burst when you're like level 30 and your your stun DCs or your stun, fortitude save is like 100 or something and you roll a 1? No, nah, none of that. You always make your saving throw against stun effects. This is so cool. Um, I would love to play some kind of like half orc uh, fighter cleric. Uh, so like six level, probably six levels of fighter, 14 cleric, and go all strength based and just murder people. You cast all the heal spells. You half orc so you get the, the good tree. I love strength domain. This is very cool. Uh, next is Sun Domain. Uh, Sun Domain. So you gain fire and light spell power per cleric level. So that's kind of cool. So it's 40 light and fire spell power at max at level 20. When you turn on dead, a flame strike comes out at your location. I'm assuming this does damage. I don't know. I don't know if it does damage. I'm assuming it does damage. So flame strike. Cool. Uh, Searing Light, spell like ability, Flame Strike, spell like ability, and Sunburst. Now, Searing Light sucks, Flame Strike sucks, and Sunburst suck. So, this domain is kind of cool, but all the spells suck. So, if you really want to play a Sun Cleric, you get the feel of the Sun. You got Searing Light, just pew! You got Flame Strike, pew! You got your Sunburst, your pew! But Sunburst is terrible, Searing Light is terrible, Flame Strike is terrible. So, I don't know if any of these would be really good at all. Um, 
the cool thing is if you play Divine Disciple, you can get two Searing Light spell-like abilities. So that's kind of neato, and you can just like pew-pew all day. Both the spells suck, though, so you're still going to do no damage. So yeah, I don't know about this one. This is like... I don't know. Turn Undead would be really good with this, though. The new Turn Undead, anyway. Because with the damage plus the Flame Strike damage, plus Flame Strike spell-like ability, you can kind of... A like, Undead are your thing, but everything else is kind of whatever. Um, trickery Domain. You get plus one to the DCs your enchantment spells, and so then it goes up to plus four total at level 18. When you use Turn Undead, your party gains Charisma, so this basically makes your turns more powerful, I guess. And you get Invisibility, Mind Fog, and Charm Monster. So, this is interesting, but I don't know what I would do with it. Honestly, it feels like this domain is just kind of... This domain is basically like the law domain, but worse. It gets worse spell-like abilities. Mind Fog is basically useless. Invisibility comes from scrolls. Charm Monster... Or, sorry, Charm Monster Mass. I mean, that's kind of a cool spell-like ability, but I can imagine people would just get frustrated with you. Um, so, like, maybe in Reaper Mode or something you could use this. Charms are incredibly popular in Reaper Mode. People might be like, oh yeah, like... Bam! It's charming all the groups and stuff, and you have kind of like this would basically make the pure a good army build if you were to make an army build. So I think trickery could work as an army build, um, especially because I'm assuming Charm Monster Mass spell like ability would scale off of Wisdom. So you crack crack open your Wisdom, get as high as you can. It's an enchantment spell, so maybe like with some like trickery. So what is it? I'd probably do like um, like 14 cleric, six warlock. And then you're going to be picking up all the good stuff out of the Warlock Tree for your summons and your charmed creatures. All the stuff out of Harper. You got your Druid past lives. You can make some kind of interesting army build, but I don't know about that. War Domain. So War Domain is not quite like Destruction Domain. It's actually good. So let's talk about why. So one, you get plus one range damage with melee and we range weapons, and that goes up to 20. So uh, this gives you plus six damage. The other one gave you six melee power, and this one gives you six damage. Your base damage is always going to be lower than your melee power or range power that you get. Uh, melee and range power, you can expect to go up to 250 at max level. Base damage is might be peaking around 100. So this is just way better point for point. So this is just obviously better. When you turn on dead, your party gains divine bonus to melee and range power equal to half your cleric level. I think it's actually the same one. Um, you gain proficiency in all martial and exotic weapons. Wow, all weapons. You're like, cool, I want to use a Kopesh now. And you just whip out the Kopesh. Oh, no, it's a good Bastard Sword that dropped. No problem, just grab the Bastard. Oh, man, it's a really good Dwarven Axe. Pick up the Dwarven Axe. I'm dual wielding Dwarven Axe Kopesh. I'm dual wielding comma hand wraps. I don't know. This is cool. I really like this. Um... You can even use this to, cir to circumvent feat proficiencies. Like, I don't know, this is kind of neat. Um, level 9. Your one-handed weapons have a base damage of a d10. Your two-handed weapons have a base damage of 2d8. This will not reduce the base damage. Die if it is higher. This is crazy. Uh, this basically makes me want to make a uh, light pick build. Where you make a swashbuckling light pick character who has a who's swashbuckling but has a light pick, which is normally a D4 damage, which is the worst damage in the game, but it's actually a D10 here, and it's normally a times four critical. Plus, you get the Holy Sword spell like ability. So you do like three levels of bard, 14 levels of cleric. Your tactical DCs are increased by half your cleric level. Hilarious. So uh, no, you'd probably do like like four bard, 14 cleric, and two fighter. So that gives you two fighters gives you the extra feats you need to pick up for all the swashbuckling. Uh, the Cleric DCs equal to, or DCs increased by half your cleric level, which gives you seven extra on your DCs, including all your freezes as a as a bard, and you get holy sword. So your light pick is going to be dealing a D10 base damage uh, and critting like times five or six or something. So yeah, so this is probably the best melee domain in the game, and it's going to make a new swashbuckler build. That's going to be better than everything else. No swashbuckler build is going to be better than this. So. Get ready for that if this comes out like this. Um, I think there's already like a statement somewhere saying like this is overpowered, because it is, so they'll probably change this. Um, remember, this is all tentative. Everything I'm talking about could be tentative. Uh, so I just want to give my honest feedback on this. And finally, we got Water Domain. Water Domain is just dumb. But at least it's better than Earth Domains. So let's talk about that. So you get Water Breathing, Swimming, and Cold Spell Power. Cool. And you get the Cold conversion, but there's a difference here. This one is different. This is not converting with light spell power. This is cold spell power and healing. Now, this is I obviously under the idea that water is promotes healing and that sort of thing. This is actually really cool. This means you can be an extremely powerful turn undead character, or even like a pure healer. Remember how we had that chart that I showed off? This chart, where I could say, yeah, you get 900 spell power at max level? Yeah, you can. You can get 900 radiant spell, or healing spell power by level 30. Well, that's going to convert directly into cold spell power with this. So by just straight up taking this, that gives you 900 cold spell power. So then you could automatically go um, Draconic Incarnation cold, pick up, uh, you know, energy burst, cold breath. So you're able to all of a sudden hit for like 
12 to 15,000 damage with these abilities, which is automatically insane because you're just focusing on healing spell power and nothing else. Your turn undead works in elementals, obviously. Uh, the will saving throws when you turn undead doesn't matter. Um, but you get solid fog, which is an amazing spell-like ability for low levels. If you're going to go ahead and do reaper mode, this is so good. Solid fog is unreal in how powerful it is. Plus, it's a spell-like ability, so you can pretty much throw it down for free every single time you fight a monster, group of monsters. Kona Cold is a fantastic spell. It's one of the best cold spells in the game, slightly behind Auto Luke's Freezing Sphere, just for the actual targeting capacity. So hilarious. And then finally, you gain Greater Creeping Cold as a spell-like ability. This is one of the best dots in the game. So. Water domain, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, cold is one of the worst elements, um, this is crazy. Um, yep, flame bear, I totally agree. Well, uh, one of the viewers, because I am doing this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, that a dragonborn cleric, you could max out your positive spell power, have insanely high charisma, and then go to town with cold spell power. So, this is crazy. So that is my review of the Cleric Changes. This has turned into a 40-minute YouTube video, but too bad you're going to watch it all. If you don't want to watch it all, I did actually put, I'm going to put annotations or whatever, like a timeline in the bottom, and so you can know what I'm talking about, turn on dead to, to each individual domain. So if you want to skip around and just see one thing, actually I should probably put that in the front instead of the end. Buh. But yeah, so I'm going to do that. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you do have anything you'd like to dispute with me, especially about the effectiveness of Turn Undead, please do so in the comments below this video because, you know, I, like I said, I did the math on here. If you can tell me what the hit dice of some of the monsters are or if there's like a good accurate chart, that's great. And I would love to see that so I can determine how, this, how well this math holds up against the actual in-game. But like I said, in reality, almost all, if not, like probably like 5% of players maybe actually turn stuff and kill them with turn on dead and the other 95% never use the ability or have never seen what it does um, they just don't even know so this is convoluted confusing the max turning like I said it took me an hour to put this table together uh, whereas the new one took me like no time at all and even with zero investment being able to have a DC 20 and to chance to stun pretty much an entire room that's really powerful um, and it's going to be useful by a lot of people. And if you look at like the potential realistic ver applications of this, it's going to be crazy. So, like I said, thank you guys for watching. I hope all of you have had a super delightful day. And like, let me know what you think or something. Um, something. <laughs>